Welcome to my lecture on characterization of Holocene sediments in the Ebro Delta in Spain. My name is Beatriz del Jumea and I work at the Cartographic and Geological Institute of Catalonia. I would like to acknowledge my co-authors who are listed here and made possible this work. This is the itinerary we are going to follow. First, an introduction about the Ebro Delta, followed by its geological setup. Next, we will talk about the objectives and methodology and we will introduce briefly the parameters we use during the field survey that are important to understand some of the results. Finally, we will present the conclusions. The Ebro Delta in Spain is the fifth largest delta in the Mediterranean, occupying a subarial area of 350 square kilometers. Nowadays, the Ebro Delta coastline is retreating landward due to a combination of sediment subsidence, sea level rise, and sediment deficit caused by river damming. This work is included in a European life project focused on defining actions for adaptation to and mitigation of the climate change in the Ebro Delta. Within this framework, it is necessary to measure special changes of the mean surface sediment since variation of sediment properties directly bears on subsidence. The Holocene sediments in the Ebro Delta are related to five major environments, overbank and alluvial, delta front, marsh, lagunal, and pro-delta sediments. Four of these environments can be seen on surface as shown in the map where the limits between them has been marked with dashed lines. The lithology of these Holocene detail deposits includes a mix of sands, silts, and clays for the alluvial deposits, mainly sands at the delta front environment, organic silts are predominant in marsh and lagunal, and finally, marine clays for pro-delta sediments. These Holocene sediments overlay place to sink gravels that would act as a key surface to understand subsidence phenomena. In the Holocene sediments characterization, our targets will be superficial sediment parameters focus on BS estimation of the first 10 meter depth, identification of the prodelta marine clays since they are more prone to comp compaction than the overlaying sediments, and hence, the delineation of the top and thickness estimation is critical for subsidence characterization. The third target is to delineate the base of Holocene sediments. Improving knowledge of Holocene sediment thickness is a key parameter also for this subsidence analysis. What we first are going to do is to evaluate the effectiveness of a suit of geophysical methods in a delta environment using test measurements. In this site, we will integrate the geophysical results with geotechnical and geological information coming from two boreholes that sampled the whole Holocene sequence. From this analysis, we can identify geophysical patterns that we will help to meet our targets in an extended survey along the Ebro Delta. In this map, we show the location of the test sites with, with the boreholes. S1 is located in the alluvial and S2 in the delta front environment. I would like to highlight the main differences in acquisition parameters between the test sites and the extended survey. We use 48 geophones at the test sites versus 24 on a land streamer for the extended survey. We were able to measure ambient noise in L-shaped arrays in the test sites with different array length for S1 and S2. Due to special limitations, S2 array was acquired with a shorter length than S1. The total number of seismic profiles in the area is 15, 10 of which are coincident with electrical profiles. We have acquired a total of 160 HOV stations covering the study area. We present the results of using active and passive seismic measurements to retrieve the VS profile. This slide corresponds to the S1 site. We show the composure gathered from records with different offsets to increase the number of traces. In this way, we improve the resolution of the FK image. We also include a recording of ambient noise in this L-shaped array. We can observe that the FK histogram from ambient noise clearly defines the energy corresponding to surface waves at lower frequencies than the active FK plot. From the whirlpool, we show the VS profile derived from the CPTO test and the lithological description. Yellow color corresponds to sands, grays to silts and clays, and finally red with Christus in rubbles. 
The CPTUVS CPT shows velocity increasing with depth down to 25 meter depth and then a significant velocity decrease. These characteristics of the wall wall VS profile has helped to define the parameterization for the joint inversion of active and passive, passive dispersion curves. Hence, the parameterization includes a first layer with a velocity function that linearly increases with depth, and a second layer where we allow velocity inversion. The inverted profile with the lowest misfit is shown with the black line. We can say that the VS profile from surface width analysis is in a good agreement with the ball wall profile. We show the same information for the S2 TSI. In this case, VS is in agreement with the ball wall information except for the contact between clays and gravel. This discrepancy can be related with the acquisition setup with the shorter array for S2 than for S1 side, as explained before. In any case, combination of active and passive measurements is a good approach to obtain the VS of the Holocene sequence down to the gravels. Regarding the first target focused on differences on surface sediment properties, we observe that the CPTU VS profiles show different VS value for the first 10 meters at S1 and S2 test sites. This pattern has also been recovered in the VS profiles from surface width analysis. According to the vocal description, this difference is related to the type of sediments. A higher percentage of sand can be found at the shallow part of the S1 borehole. So using average velocity at all the seismic profiles will help to solve different environments along the delta, as we will show after. The second target was the identification of the pro-delta mammal clays. As noticed before, VS profiles from the geotechnical and geophysical surveys show a decrease in shear wave velocity corresponding to the presence of clays below sand. This velocity inversion could explain the energy jumps between modes that are observed in the FK plot from the test sites, as was suggested by Emila Matsuoka or Miyatan. This last work relates these energy jumps with the presence of guided waves propagating in the low velocity layer. Suji et al. use a frequency and phase velocity where this jump occurs to estimate the depth of the low velocity layer. Using this approach, we obtain these results of the top depth of the prodelta clays, which are coherent with the lithological description. Using the dense geometry at the test site has allowed to match the energy jumps in high resolution of key plots. But what happens if we use the less number of receivers as we did for the extended survey? We introduce a comparison between FK plots coming from the two sides along a streamer acquisition. The FK plot at S2 side shows separation between modes in contrast to the energy overlap that characterizes S1, where clays are deeper. Hence, it is expected that only if the pro-delta clays are shallow, we will be able to constrain the depth of the clay top using the energy jumps parameters. Finally, we move we move on to the third target. These are the electrical resistivity models obtained at the two test sites. The resistivity values are lower than 40 ohm meters since electrical measurements are strongly influenced by water quality and salinization. In spite of this strong influence, the obtained electrical contrast can still help to delineate the base of the Holocene sediments as shown in this figure. An increment of resistivity corresponds to the presence of the coarser sediments below the clays. We can use this information as a constraint to interpret the last applied method, which is the H over V technique. These are the results obtained for these techniques. Both plots show two peaks at frequencies we have identified as F0 and F1. The F0 represents the soil fundamental frequency and it is related to the impedance contrast between the soft sedimentary cover and the bedrock. The F1 is interpreted as a resonance frequency due to a large acoustic impedance contrast between fine sediments and blisters and gravels, as was shown by Macau and Coffers in another delta. These frequency values can be transformed into depth values using an empirical relationship of exponential type. H over V frequency and depth of the Holocene base from other boreholes and from ERT models are used to be fit to this curve and obtain the constants of this expression. 
the obtained death values are in agreement with properly political description of the test sites. Now we are going to use these geophysical patterns we have extracted from the test site to an extended survey. Regarding the first target for the extended survey, we present three examples sorted by different sedimentary environments, marsh alluvial and delta front. Average PSF values in a color scale are displayed on top of a soil map for layers between 0 and 5 and 5 to 10 meters depth. These models show very low velocity values, as low as 50 meters per second at the near surface, and has been interpreted as organics. These values are the lowest measured in the whole delta. This profile is also characterized by a sharp lateral contrast observed in the average plot and the VS model. And also can be seen clearly in the character of the short colors. Low velocity and fre low frequency for the pit area in contrast to higher frequency and higher slope of the surface waves at the end of the profile. We go now to the overbank and alluvial zone. Average velocity increases from 100 meters per second to 150 meters per second below 5 meters. We also show a typical short color of this sector. Finally, in the delta front environment, average velocity is higher than 150 meters per second in the first 10 meters. 10 meter. That agrees with what this was extracted from the test site results. Focus now in the identification of the pro delta marine clays. These are two examples where two clear energy jams are observed. The frequency is higher inland and it would correspond to a shallow low velocity layer compared to the other side that is shown in this slide. And the base of the Holocene sediments is above from all the HOVV measurements. The depth ranges between 0 and 70 meters, with a gradual increase from west to east. The southwest region is characterized by a great variability that can be related to ancient channels from the river in the subsurface. So now we go to the conclusions. We have seen that using test sites with ground tubing, we have been able to identify your physical patterns that aid to characterize the Holocene sediments in the whole study. We have also assessed the limitation of the geometry that was used for the extended survey. The integration of active and passive seismic techniques provide a complete VS profile of the Holocene sediments in these test sites. Regarding the standard survey, surface width analysis with a short line schema configuration of 24 geophones can help to characterize different sedimentary environments. Inversion velocity corresponding to pro delta sediments, in this case, marine clays, can be imaged including higher mode information but we have to remember that the acquisition geometry restricted this detection to the near surface. And HOVV technique can provide information of the Holocene sediments base, along with electrical resistivity tomography and borehole information. This is a fast technique that allows to cover large areas. I would like to acknowledge the students who participated in the field, the developers of the GeoPC package, and finally, the financial contribution of the European Life Program. Thank you.